It was spring in western Montana, and excited about the melting snow, we decided to go for a little road trip with a friend of ours who was commissioned to repaint the giant cow at Clearwater Junction. The same cow which has been featured prominently in two incredibly popular video games, Far Cry 5 and Far Cry A New Dawn. First destination on our journey to that cow? The Steel Toe Distillery, just a few miles past Twin Creeks, Montana, and about 20 miles east of Missoula. Howdy, I'm going Carl. This is uh, Steel Toe Distillery here in Potomac, Montana, on the Scenic Highway 200 route. I make three products here. I make a whiskey, I make a gin, and I make a thing called Settler's Tea. The thing about a distillery is you don't get to choose where you build your distillery. You've got to build your distillery where the water is good, right? And that's the really neat thing about here is we have super high limestone content. As it turns out, I'm within three miles of the five major moonshine operations that happened out in this area during the Prohibition. Um, why? Good water, man. High limestone content, just like Bourbon County. Everything in my life sort of nudged me in this direction, and I just had the, uh, you know, I came from a, a factory a factory upbringing where we made a little family water heater business in Madison, Wisconsin, and so basically a still is a flame in a bucket, right? And <laughs> did some flammable vapor tests like that, and ran some fuel stills, and did some experimentation that way over the years, and of course sort of moonshine them, um, and uh, you know, the rest is kind of history. Got married, got a wife and a kid. Well, you can't be an outlaw no more. You gotta like, you know, toe the line and be right. a respectable citizen. So, and we're legit. Go out like Butch and Sunday. All right. So, gin in the Middle Ages was more of an aquavit, more of a found and forged of medicinal herbs and spices. And when the plague happened, the British found out that juniper berries reduced swelling in the glands. So they thought I cured the plague. And that's when gin became the horrifying juniper heavy paint thinner that you know of today. Or that it was a lovely little floral drink and a homeopath dream that all the medicinal botanicals in there. See, thanks to the hippie kids, we now actually have empirical evidence that tinctures work, right? <laughs> so this is basically a medicinal tincture of all of these botanicals. Good for you, good and healthy. Why, why make it good for you? Why not? We started admiring some of the historical battle armor hung around the building when a few other folks showed up and at the urging of Uncle Carl, convinced us to test some of it out. I'm not going to say that we've had enough of the specialty hooch here to make this seem like a good idea, necessarily, but it's hard not to think that the two might be connected. grabbed our things, picked up a bottle or two of some of Uncle Carl's specialty mix, and decided it was time to hit the road and continue on our journey. This is where it must be noted that I, as the cameraman, was the assigned designated driver for the journey, and that Bill and Parker hadn't really drank all that much in the first place, but either way, they weren't really driving. I was going to be driving, so we were all safe. Yeah! Trixie's. We gotta go to Trixie's Highway 200. Gotta go to O Van Bell. That way. That way. Right. Got a weird loop. Take me up and down. but before we headed there, we wanted to stop by several waypoints just off of Highway 200 to assess the spring runoff. We were curious what the river looked like and whether it would be kayakable or fishable anytime soon. First, we headed to two popular put-ins for floating the Blackfoot River, both of which are located up John's Rude Road. Parker wasn't familiar with this particular stretch of the river, Bill and I decided we'd show him where Thibodeau Rapids were located. From there, we continued up road until we came to Whitaker Bridge, about six and a half miles from Steel Toe Distillery. And because Parker kept acting like a fool, we sort of kept messing with him as the trip went on. Yeah. 
After playing around for a little bit, admiring the kayakers hit in the water early in the season, we decided it was time to get back on track and head to Trixie's. Back on Highway 200, we continued eastward, setting our sights on a bite to eat at the famous Trixie's Antlers Saloon. We also sat down and learned a bit more about the joint from its current owner, Cindy Francis. Hi, I'm Cindy and I'm the owner of Trixie's Antler Saloon in Ovando, Montana, Highway 200. My husband and I took over in um, 1997 when my dad retired. Um, as I, My parents bought it from Trixie in 1978, so it's been four years in our family. As soon as the door opens, it's how you doing, welcome, you know, and it's just a great stopping place, you know. There's always fun people to talk to and people come from all over the world. Um, biker, bicycle riders, you know, motorcyclists, just recreationists in general. And uh, we have a pretty solid reputation, which you, you know, you know because you've heard of us in Missoula. And, um, you know, I think it's just the, there's not a lot of places like Trixie's left noticed our Trixie truck outside. Um, one of the big things is to climb on top of the Trixie truck and sit up there and watch the sunset. We had a guy, uh, Pat and Molly, he was going to um, uh, propose to his girlfriend and he, we, we were in on it and so he had made up a sign to put over the Trixie, Molly will you marry me? And she was in here and then they're out there talking and they, he kind of brought her in to the and she saw the sign and she said yes and they just got married a couple of years ago here in Ovando. Ovando's pretty cool community. We're really super cycle friendly um, and those guys that ride the tour to, um, divide, you know, they're, they come in, they come in here um, and then they, there's places downtown for them to stay like the teepee or the, or the hoose cow. Um, things like that so it's a pretty cool community. You know, you know Trixie's been here a long time um, and so I think that's part of it. Some people will say, um, you know, do you know where Ovando is? And they say no. And you'll say, what about Trixie's? And they'll say yes. And we have sandwiches and we have steak and seafood and salad bar. And then we have the best two crick beef burgers. They're, they're good burgers. If you're going to eat, you need to have a burger. All that and it. You didn't walk it. smelled it right Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. And the fries. Oh, you guys, the fries are so good. <laughs> We are open seven days a week from right the first part of May through uh, November. On the first of December, we close on Mondays. And then we're closed from on Mondays through through May. Through all to May, I should say. So we can have a day off. brings us to a place where even on their sign it states that people are outnumbered by dogs two to one. With a population of about 50, many of Ovando's businesses are based upon the landscape in which it sits, surrounded by mountains and fresh water in every direction. And once the river has finished its spring runoff, people head en masse to the rivers to fish, float, and enjoy, Ovando becomes a bustling town filled with people. We visited shortly prior to this boom and met up with someone who caters specifically to the needs of those folks. I'm Tony Dronebeck. We're in Ovando, Montana. I'm with Ovando River Shuttles. The draw to the Blackfoot River Valley is, um, it boils down to a mecca of uh, trout fishermen coming in with really, really nice selection of fish. Um, from brown, rainbow, brook, and golden trout you can get. Um, but the, the cutthroat is unbelievable on the, these tributaries that come into the river itself. And it's a long winding river that's, that's really healthy. Um, and I think that's the draw to the fishermen. For us as the business, these people go and float. And what we provide is a service to take their vehicles, their trailers, on down to the exit when they, when they do their their trips. For me, it's it's one of the most untouched um, rivers that I know in Montana um, that you have still have access, to, a really good access to. Um, the Smith is a lottery. That's our 
unbelievable fishing body of water. Um, Rock Creek is really nice, but it's a very short season. So typically this is a very long season and some of our best fishing is actually early fall um, that the guides will come out and we're still going in October. You know, we'll still be running shuttle business and, and doing all that. And there's a lot of new folks that want to come out and try the Blackfoot. Maybe they've done the Bitter or the Clark or the Madison. Mm -hmm. And they've done these other bodies. They want, they want to try the Blackfoot. Um, and we try to get them into areas that, that's easy for them. If it's parents with kids, we try to get them into a good float and easy access, easy a exit, um, and make it a great experience for them. We also do connections to the Bob Marshall Wilderness from this location, and we do long shuttles, which we go up north to Hungry Horse. Um, so there are trailheads here. We have people that hike. We have people that bike. The Continental Divide Tour runs through here, which is an uh, extreme mountain bike from Banff that goes all the way across the Continental Divide down to Mexico. Um, so these are world-class folks that come in. When you see people with a motorhome or something pull off to the side and they're going to take a picture, a lot of times as locals we're like, what are they taking a photo of? And then realize it is a mountain scene or it is the rapids or it is the river, which it's a, that's a beautiful thing. And that's something that we take for granted every single day. And we're very blessed to be out in this valley um, and see it. And that, that was one of the biggest draws for us to move to this location is, is to be part of that. There's so many beautiful spots just to pull off and take a look. And there's moments that we just, we, it's our office, you know. We get to run this all the time, dip a toe in whenever we can. After dipping our toes in for a few, it was time to turn around and head back to Missoula. But not before we made one last stop at the Clearwater Stop and Go to admire the gigantic cow that is not just a Montana gem, but it is also the cow from the popular video games Far Cry 5 and Far Cry New Dawn. As it turns out, Missoula artist and the man who'd been holding us hostage with his party hat all day, Parker Beckley, is the man responsible for the cow's newest coat of paint. I am Parker Beckley, a Missoula, Montana born and raised artist. I painted this here cow, a true icon of Highway 200. Tell me about that. I've seen brother and sister cows to this cow throughout Montana, though I do not know if they're the same person, but I assume. I don't, honestly don't know anything about this cow. This place came under new ownership and they asked me to paint this giant cow, which is essentially like painting Montana's Statue of Liberty. I personally would have wanted to paint it like bright pink or something, but I've had to stick with tradition and I feel like I did okay. Uh, honestly don't know anything about it. I feel bad taking any credit for it because I just repainted it. When I was painting it, people would always just... Bye-bye. People are always just uh, coming up. Pretty much I could paint for about three minutes and somebody would be like, you're painting the cow? And I would be like, yes. I, a lot of ranchers would come up and be like, cows don't have blue eyes, you know? So I painted its eyes black with just a hint of blue to uh, pay homage to the uh, former cow. The former cow had blue eyes? Former cow had blue eyes and no shading or anything. I feel like I gave it a proper makeover. It hasn't faded off, so I'm pretty happy. <laughs> We'll see, time will tell. Uh, no new bullet holes, as far as I can tell, uh, which is nice. Oh, wait, actually, that one looks new. I don't know. <laughs> Highway 200 weaves and crosses the Blackfoot River not just for the duration of the drive from Missoula to Ovando, but it continues on like that for hundreds of miles. And if you're willing to hop on your bike or put a few gallons in the gas tank to wander this ribbon of concrete, you'll find that the highway, the river, and the people are all connected. They're all willing to help you along, show you a good time, and the journey is there for you to follow as long as you care to.
the Clearwater Junction, I believe, comes from Seely Lake. And I don't, like, I don't feel like, I know it does, but like, it's still, still weird.